Hello, this is getting ray guns into proportion in two point perspective. So, this is the station point technique of getting a cube in perspective. And um, once I found that unit, I expressed it up this line. And then I found the center point, which is, of course, two cubes um, of four, and go right to the vanishing point, same with this, and then oh, I've got, and then express this vertical here, like that, and then what I did was I crossed points, you can cross here, I could cross here and hit that point and go to there, uh, but I'm trying to express this unit, so what I did is I went from there to that point right there, and where that hits, and you got to be pretty precise with this, where that hits is where the next vertical is expressed. And so on and so forth. Then I go from there through there and down the line. And then I have a wall of cubes that are seven feet, the seven deep and four high. Um, and um, there you go. So that gives you the concept of expressing ratios um, down uh, intersecting with a, a center line. Okay, this is the the uh, thing we were sh looking at before and I've completed it a little bit and and so what I'm going to do is take this 16 um, square um, uh, 16 section grid that's based on centers and translate that into a two-point perspective. Now also what I'm going to uh, do is get this uh, width here is going to be important for establishing the initial ratio. Uh, remember the initial ratio I established was 14, 44, and 28. Okay, this is just an estimated one. Um, again, using the central axis, finding the centers, uh, transparent construction, um, and nice line quality in the graphite. I'd like to see that really nice dark graphite line quality. Okay, here is that same orthographic image translated in a two-point perspective. Uh, I took those three uh, measurements of the tiny thumbnail and times it by three, like that. And then I uh, got a station point. I extended the paper out with tape on the back, uh, got those way out there, found the station point, 90 degree relationship. Uh, this is the line of sight, and I put the corner right there, and times three, the height is 84. Uh, times 3 uh, is 42 of the depth and times uh, 3 of the length is 132. So remember the, the, the square unit and then translating the square unit this way and this way? Well what I'm doing is translating the ratios of the different dimensions of this box in the same way. So this becomes um, a vertical unit, this becomes the unit that would go this way, uh, and this would become this, okay? And so then, once you get this T form here, uh, then you find your station points, measuring points, this measurement is this, this measurement is this, and then convergence lines, and then where this intersects, going to the measuring point, that's the first vertical there, where this intersects going to that measure point, the convergence line is that vertical. Then what you have is the proportions in perspective. And so uh, again, uh, you do the center, find the centers, divide it into sections. I would suggest dividing it into uh, this face like 16. The, notice these aren't cubes. Um, these are rectangular prisms. This is a cube relationship here. Um, and so from that I can find my points of tangencies in the cone. Uh, I found uh, 
you know, the, how this square was, uh, this rectangular prism is inset. It's actually not as wide as this box that I created. And then how I made it go in was by finding the approximate line. I would use this red line here and said it's inset this much. That's the boundary point of this, okay? And then I created a square that's hitting the point, you know, it's very on the edge of this outside construction box. And then I drew diagonals, and then I inset it a bit. Because the way it is on here is it's inset. It's inset this way, and it's inset this way from our grid lines, okay? So uh, because of that, this line is insetting it this way and saying you're going this way okay so I did that doing that then doing this diagonal then I'm insetting it this way and centered with the center axis okay so the diagonals do that I pick a point and then I just run this to the vanishing point do a vertical run to the vanishing point do a vertical and there you have that centered on that axis and I've got that uh, you, again follow your centers of all your shapes. Once you discover a shape, go ahead and construct it transparently um, using the vanishing points and find the centers of it wherever there's anything attaching to it. Uh, make sure you don't get too messy as you go and um, just use your eraser when you need to to avoid confusions, especially in ellipse land. Okay.